Well, good morning, and we are at uh, Wednesday, May 13th. Uh, a couple more days, and we'll be at the middle of May. That almost rhymes. Um, so we're trucking right along. We are, of course, still in the book of James. Um, and good morning. Uh, it looks like the adult, I think Janet got on first, Vicky, Vicky, then J Janet, then Vicky. Um, we're in the book of James. We're, we're in the first chapter. We're going to look at verses 9 through 11 today, trying to take little bite-sized pieces, trying to keep these um, thoughts to, uh, to a little more concise uh, basis um, so that uh, more, more, a little bit more pithy, as they say. So uh, while we're waiting for people to jump on here, let's open up with a quick word of prayer to bless this day, all right? So let's please, please uh, bow our heads. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this this day, and we do lift up our prayers, um, as we have been for our, our uh, all of the folks out there that are dealing with, with being isolated because of this virus. And uh, Lord, we do lift up prayers for our leaders, for discernment and wisdom and guidance. Uh, but we do, as I was going to say, uh, most earnestly lift up prayers for our farmers and our ranchers, uh, the people in our in the agricultural industries, um, the, the people that that provide the food that we need to sustain our physical bodies, so that we might get through these times, Lord. And uh, uh, also, they're a very, 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 very vital part of our ag, our, our rural rather economies, Lord. And we understand that being in a rural state and lord we just lift those people up because uh, so much is dependent on them not just the economy but our very lives uh to have the food and the nourishment that we need so we lift these prayers up for them today we pray for each and everyone listening in today uh that your spirit might uplift them and guide them and renew them and refresh them we pray this in your love and glory amen okay so good morning everyone Let's jump right into James um, chapter 1, 9 to 11 is where we're at. Um, and I don't know if you guys can see it. I, I don't see these, uh, the other side of this live streaming. I don't know if when you log on, if you can see, I try to type in the scripture that we're looking at that day. Let me know if you can see it, okay? I don't know because I'm on this side of the camera. And when I see it, everything's already done. So let me know if you can see that. That'd be, that'd be good feedback for me. So let's look at James. Let the believer who is lowly boast in being raised up, and the rich in being brought low, because the rich will disappear like a flower in the field. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the field. Its flowers fall, its flowers fall, and its beauty perishes. It is the same way with the rich. In the midst of a busy life, they will wither away. Um, and of course, this is some of those verses that, that most of you know that I is, is preaching against. Uh, riches and and our, our focus in this world on stuff and boy you know you all know that I really hate when that when I have to preach against stuff because I, I like my stuff and I, I I'm, I'm guilty of that um, one of the things I don't think I've ever t shared with you um, you know Gail and I both love to collect things and and one of the things I've been collecting for about 30 years ever since I met Gail um, has been carnival glass, and I just really love carnival glass. There's something about glassware in 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 general um, that is a metaphor for life. It's such a it's so beautiful, but it's so fragile. And all it takes is one little slip, and that life has been shattered. That glass has been shattered. So the, to me, there's a there, there's a very uh, real metaphor to to the beauty of glass and how fragile it is. That it, it, it is a reminder of this life and how how delicate we, we all are. Uh, but specifically, I collect carnival glass, and, and more specifically, I collect, of all things, strange as it is, I collect mostly butterfly patterns of carnival glass. Well, uh, the re there's, there's several reasons for that, but one of them is that the butterfly is something, that if you remember when Brenda decorates the church uh, at Easter time, what is she putting up? Butterflies. We have this caterpillar, this metaphor of the caterpillar who is so focused on the things of this world and such a gluttonous eater and just its whole life is focused towards consumption and, 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 and gorging itself. And suddenly one day it's had all it can, it can stand to that and it's drawn to something different. 
and that butterfly then becomes a chrysalis and then or that caterpillar becomes a chrysalis and then the chrysalis breaks forth eventually and the butterfly takes off and the butterfly of course is no longer interested in the world the butterfly is only interested in the sky being a flying in closer if you will to god so there's a very powerful metaphor there of the butterfly and that's why it's, it's been used over and over so i love that 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 dying to the old and being born to the new and so it's it's a metaphor for hopefully for our lives um but here we have this talking about and and we have to remember it's not a condemnation of 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 having money necessarily uh it's an idea of the reversal of the way we understand things um you know in jesus time uh, leading up to jesus time i should say because the, the book of job really addressed this but there still was that idea that if you were wealthy you were blessed and if you weren't wealthy then you, you obviously did something wrong you must have sinned and and so therefore you are a sinful be creature um, to be despised and looked down on. Um, so it's, this is, again, about that reversal. And I just want to use one little metaphor for an, another metaphor for you today to address this, a way, a way of thinking about this. And it's how we think about things of this world. Now, in, no metaphor is perfect, but bear with me. Um, imagine that you're in a, in a desert, and of course, this verses talk about the sun beating down and withering things, and of course, the sun beats down. And as you're going along, you have a satchel with you, you have a bag, uh, and as you walk along, you, can find, you, you occasionally come to bottled water and you come to gold bricks. And so you start collecting, of course, the gold bricks and the water, and eventually you get that satchel so full of gold bricks there's not much room left for your water and then finally you come to a point where there's a whole pile of bottled water and you see that as you look in the distance you can see there's no more water in sight and there's no more gold bricks either and so you've got a choice to make are you going to be burdened with the things of this world the gold or are you going to leave that gold behind and fill up with that life-giving water and I think that's really, uh, it, it is, again, it's imperfect. I can shoot a few holes in it, but I think it's a, it's a reasonably good metaphor to help us to grasp this world and to understand that, um, that, that what the things of this world are only going to weigh us down. And what we really need to sustain us in this long life, this life where the sun beats down on us so relentlessly at times, the world weighs us down. We, we need that life-giving water. and We need to make sure that we stock up on that. So anytime we have a moment to spend in Scripture, um, anytime we have time to listen to a sermon, um, even just to be in prayer. Uh, or reading devotionals. Um, I think those are times that we need to grab that bottle of water uh, because you don't know when, when that stockpile is going to dry up. Uh, that's an imperfect metaphor because he's with us always, but, but I think you get my point. So with that, I'm going to cut you short because I'm doing my best to be pithy because my wife is, keeps reminding me. Um, one of my friends does devotionals on Thursdays only, um, but he, his, his are three minutes long, so I'm getting judged by, by my, my, my fellow minister that's a friend of Gail and I. So with that, let's take out, let's be the water to this world. Let's be a blessing to someone today and uh, take care. And we'll be back. Tomorrow, um, we have the devotions at 9. Busy day. Thursdays are a busy day. 5 o'clock to 5.30 to drive through uh, communion. And then 7, we will have a uh, live streaming service from the chapel. Okay? God bless. See you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.